Cool. Can I start? Sure. All right. Uh, so I did my EE on heavy metal movement after I read an article in the Coeur d'Alene Press or something about uh, heavy metals that were threatening Coeur d'Alene's ecosystem. Uh, and I was reading through the article, and I noticed that nowhere in there did it say how the heavy metals were being released. They were saying that more agricultural runoff was causing it, and that there were uh, heavy metals in the soil from mining, but they never said exactly how it was released. And so I wanted to find that up. Next slide. Uh, and so I did, did some research, dug around, called some researchers uh, in Coeur d'Alene who study it. And uh, I came up with this experiment to test this process, which is actually a bacterial process. Um, so agricultural runoff causes more detritus, more organic matter to grow, and that organic matter dies, falls to the bottom, and then more bacteria at the bottom of the lake eat that, which consumes oxygen, and then other bacteria have less oxygen, so they turn to iron. And this iron compound is bound up with heavy metals, and when the bacteria eat the iron, it releases these heavy metals into the water column. So it's like two processes of heavy metals and bacteria in the sediment. And so I wanted to find out if I could prevent the heavy metals from reaching the area of the bacteria. And the really cool thing is that researchers found that an ash layer from Mount St. Helens blocked the movement of these heavy metals. So my experiment is testing properties of ash versus clay and stuff. So, wow. Uh, <laughs> I have a test to determine, you know, what kind of, like, what kind of properties the ash has relative to clays and stuff, because ash is mainly made of silicon dioxide and some other compounds, and clays have different chemical makeups. So my goal is to find out, like, is it at the atomic level, is there like chemical reactions that prevent this heavy metal complex from moving? Uh, so my experiment is like determining if there's a chemical interaction, uh, because. I tested it by shaking basically this heavy metal solution with a bunch of different sediments, and I'll see if they bind at the molecular level. Um, so I've been working with Kaiser Aluminum and some people at the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, uh, and I'll get results back this week. So not quite done, but should see results soon. Next slide. Okay, so first major finding was during the research stage. is It's a bacterial process, not a chemical one, uh, which is really interesting. And then, <laughs> so I make it sound uh, pretty simple, but the reality is it's a whole bunch of processes that come together. So I'm studying one tiny little process of it. Um, and there's a lot of different cap layers that they're looking at besides ash. So I'm only one small part of it. And then uh, once I get my results back, it'll potentially inform us like what kinds of sediments and cap layers we need to design to help prevent heavy metal movement based on whether or not they're inhibited by these certain chemical compounds. Next slide. Okay, so uh, one of the big, big problems I encountered was communication delays um, because the research was fairly complicated. So I had to reach out to a lot of researchers because it was hard to make sense of the papers. Like, I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> it's not, it wasn't easy to put together all the different scientific papers on the chemistry. Uh, and of course, there's email delays and Scientists were on vacation, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I had to set up calls with them, and that all took a lot of time. Uh, and then, of course, it was pretty complex stuff, so I had to get some researchers to actually explain it to me, because <clears throat> I couldn't get it from just reading the papers. Uh, and then, <clears throat> once I had figured out my experimental setup, there was a lot of complexity to that, and we had to order more materials, uh, do a bunch of equations to figure out how much stuff I needed to make, because these iron particles that hold the heavy metals are actually pretty complex, and we don't really know what they are. Um, so I had to do a bunch of trials and figure out how much I needed to make. Next slide. Uh, so I worked a lot on research techniques. I learned about a bunch there, and uh, learned that you really have to ask for help, because that helps a ton. Um, yeah, <laughs> reach out to your researchers. They love helping you. Um, yeah, next slide. Uh, <laughs> yes, the previous slide. Uh, yeah, do something you find interesting, because that just makes all of it better. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and then get your sources and materials really quick, because as Shaitani said, there's a bunch of stuff that you'll find after. 
and during like iterations of research trials or experiments. And that's where the really interesting stuff happens. Next slide. <laughs> yeah, that, that's so far. Uh, next slide. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Nice. Wow. Um, did you already have your mind set on doing chemistry, or were you planning on doing something different, and then you found the article? Good uh, question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my ED. Uh, I was kind of thinking something biomechanics, but I'm not in sports science, and that was going to be hard to collect data. Um, and I was in chemistry HL, and then I read this article and thought, that'd be a cool EE. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a difficult one. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, Finley. Compared to the people who did like more research, like since you're just science and like Shatanya's was more like research based, which one like took longer or it's like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I, I can also speak to that question a little bit. In previous years when I've worked with EE students, Finley, sometimes they do their experiments like during spring break or during summer. Um, and so it really just depends on how quickly you get latched into your research topic because a lot of kids are interested in so many different things and really struggle to get into their topic. So. Like, Shaitanya had a crazy amount of reading and resources that he was just like genuinely interested in. And when you make the deep dive and start really engaging in the work really depends on you. But like, a science EE, you could get started an experiment earlier or during the summer. And to be job. avoided in October and November of your <laughs> senior year. But various challenges we had this year with COVID and all that. Shabazz. Yeah. Yeah, and you could also choose a topic that has actual publications written about it, because um, the reason I was running into so many dead ends was that the publications that, that talk about oh that. yeah, one of the reasons was that the publications that uh, mentioned this process that this researcher had mentioned aren't actually published yet because they're all new. Uh, so <laughs> maybe maybe do an EE on something that's already been published because that took me a while to figure out why it wasn't in the literature. Okay, but that being said, I suspect that John's EE is going to get very high marks because he's doing research in a field that is like evolving and growing right now. And the other aspect, I would say both of John's and Shaitanya's is they have like a personal connection to the topic. That means that they are more engaged and um, the, the IB really, really rewards students who explore things in their local community or within their like family or you know yeah with their family connections chase did you do the experimentation here at school yes i did all the lab work here at school um so i made the iron particles uh attached the zinc to it and then i sent the mixes off after I mixed them with a bunch of ash and stuff. And I sent that to Kaiser, and they're gonna run a bunch of tests on it and send me the results back. It really helps that uh, Nick McAdoo's mom is, works at Kaiser, so, yeah. That is another good point. Like, if you have personal connections with folks who are doing really interesting work, um, those are also great EEs, because when you're talking to an expert in the field, um, it gives you an opportunity in, to engage in like real research and um, credibility more than just like reading something that was published five years ago by some random somewhere else. Yep. Other questions? Shaitanya, do you want to speak to your process at all? Like to answer Finley's question about like the research? Uh, to be honest, mostly, at least for global politics, it's like you have to read a lot of like theory and literature and like scholarly articles beforehand and then you have to like apply what you learn to like current like news articles yeah. and like because like news articles aren't going to tell you like a, an analysis of like how Modi's like you know economic policies are going to the right or something like that they're just going to tell you what's happening or it's going to be like biased so you got to learn like how to pick apart those biases using what you know beforehand 
And so that can be kind of hard. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Holt, did you want to add anything else? Uh, I think, you know, John, um, on Purcell, I think some of the difficulties he has encountered over the last year with his project in terms of COVID, um, I think changing advisors, oh, yeah. supervisors as well. Um, and, you know, I think for you juniors, I mean, obviously we're still in COVID times, but um, I think, you know, we kind of see some light at the end of the tunnel with vaccines. And so, like, John really did this. Um, a lot of roadblocks along the way, especially when your project is, you know, relying on like networking with local people. And so, you know, he took on a lot. He's done a great job. He's almost done. Um, but just to kind of put some of that in in context, like why he's still finishing. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a lot. And you know, I think I agree with what Shaitani said. I mean, I think if I can sum up some of what he said as advice for you all, it's like, you know, get on top of the research early. Um, to give yourself a better idea of like how you're going to narrow your topic and that it will get yeah. easier. Um, and sort of the longer you delay, the more I think uncertainty about your topic sets in and then it's even harder to get started. Yeah. So. yeah. Cool. Thank you.